What has an electronic toy like this got to do with the teaching of mathematics? G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom. Welcome to Mathematics in the News for another week. So what has this toy got to do with how we teach mathematics? Well, let me explain. I have a two-year-old granddaughter, her name is Ivy, and she loves this toy. And she's starting to learn the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star by just listening to it, by hearing it over and over again, and she'll push that yellow button repeatedly until the song starts, and it's very cute. And she doesn't really sing the tune very well, but it's as cute as all get out. We learn some mathematics by right, by repeating, especially counting. So children learning the sequence of number names, one, two, three, four, five, and so on, learn that by right. There is no other way of learning. It's the only way you can learn it. There's no way of understanding why three comes after two. You just have to remember that it does and, you know, remember the sequence. And so, you know, that's what we're familiar with and that's how we teach it. But should we adopt that approach, the approach of teaching students to repeat things until it sinks in, until they get it, for all of mathematics. I would have thought, being a child of the 60s, as I was, um, and going through a school system that was abandoning rote learning and was getting teachers to introduce new materials and new approaches where the teacher wasn't, you know, the sole authority in the classroom and developing understanding in students, that we would have abandoned rote learning for good. You know, that was 50 years ago, and yet we still have otherwise intelligent people today saying, I know, let's teach by rote. What I think is the source of this sudden interest in rote learning is the fact that the uh, UK government has recently decided to spend £41 million to train eight th the teachers in 8,000 schools in England to adopt the so-called Shanghai method. Based on the PISA tests that compare the results of students in schools um, across the world uh, from different countries. Shanghai did exceptionally well, especially at the 15-year-old level. And so educational planners and politicians in the UK have decided that's good enough for them and that they're going to adopt that method in 8,000 schools and those schools will get extra funding and blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, but shouldn't we look at this more carefully? Let me make one point straight away. Shanghai isn't a country. It's a city. It's one city. It's a big city in China, but it's not the whole of China. The whole of China didn't get these exceptional results. Shanghai did. So why pick on Shanghai? Well, obviously they got the best results. So they're the ones that are at the top of the comparison table and they're the ones being picked on. Now, I'm not saying we can't learn from our colleagues in other countries. Of course we can. We shouldn't be so arrogant as to think we've got all the answers or, you know, whichever country we're in has got the only way to teach mathematics or, any, or do anything else for that matter. We should be talking to people in other countries, keeping the lines of communication open and learning from them as much as possible. And that learning should take place in both directions. So I think teachers from Shanghai should come to New York or London or Australia, or, you know, cities and countries around the world and learn from those teachers different approaches that are being successful. Um, but, you know, here we go. People are saying this method of the Shanghai teachers is superior to methods being used in the UK. Maybe it is superior in some ways, but I just don't think we should adopt it as a whole and say, this is the method because Shanghai did so well. They're calling it a mastery method. I've seen articles in the online media comparing a mastery method for teaching mathematics with an understanding approach. And so this, this um, argument is phrased as a, a binary argument. You're either a mastery person or you're an understanding person. You can't be both. You, and obviously, since the understanding method by their logic is not working, we should all go for the mastery approach. Well, I disagree with that almost 100%. If the mastery approach is based on rote learning, if it's based on repetition without thinking, if it's based on the teacher being the authority and students being silent and learning just because the teacher tells them that that's the answer and expecting the students to do no more 
than just repeat what the teacher said or what they have been trained to do through endless repetition, then I'm against it. We can learn a lot by training. We learn to drive a car by training because it's a mechanical process. There's no great amount of thinking involved. There's a certain amount of judgment, obviously, but you learn to drive a car and your muscles get used to changing gears and looking in the mirror by practice and practice and practice. That's not how we learn to solve maths problems. If you have a mathematics problem, either in a proper mathematics class or in real life in the workplace or just in your everyday life, you don't get a solution to that by going, oh, I know a routine for that and I'm going to just regurgitate that routine because I've learned how to do it by practicing it a thousand times. It's okay to compare the results of children in school or young, young people in school and the results they get on very highly uh, structured exams and tests. And that will tell us a certain amount of information. But let's look at another comparison table. The number of people who've been awarded Nobel Prizes. Now those prizes are not given out for following the rules and doing as you're told and being able to solve routine problems, but to those who solve problems that no one else can solve, who've come up with novel solutions and pursued research at a great depth. The United States comes out on the top. China comes out on the bottom. Now again, I'm not just criticizing China. China has a, a wealth of knowledge that we in the West can learn from and we should be learning from them. But in the area of solving problems and getting Nobel Prizes, China just isn't in the race. The Western democratic nations do much better than that. I'll put some links again below the video and you can have a look for yourself. I hope that educators, especially in the Western world, will take note of the arguments being put to say that the understanding method is not working, we should go with rote learning. It's the way I learned it when I was at school. You know, I'm old enough to say that nowadays. Um, older people tend to think that. You know, if you went to school under the old method, you think it worked for you, why not, you know, for your grandchildren and so on. I think we should be exploring these issues and we should not be going for some simple solution that politicians sadly favour sometimes, which is let's get this big pile of money which we've got from the taxpayers and just pump it into this system. Tell the teachers to back off, give them a new method that's working in Shanghai and then we'll fix the problems that we've got in maths in the country. I, I just don't accept that, I don't believe that and I think teachers should be standing up and being counted um, to raise questions that uh, you know should be the concern of all people involved, especially if you're in the UK. I can. Uh, sit back and look at it if you like being an Australian taxpayer, but you know I wouldn't put it past our government to come up with some bright idea that does the same sort of thing. So do you use rote learning very much in your teaching? Obviously we all do for counting and learning the alphabet, but do you use it for other approaches? Do you teach the solving of algorithms in a rote method? Do you say this, don't think about what it all means, just go through the steps and we'll do this until you get it? I'd really love to hear what you have to say. Please let me know what you think. Please let me know what methods work for you and whether or not you're using an understanding approach, a rote approach, or as is quite likely, something in the middle where you adopt um, aspects of both. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you are not already a subscriber, then I encourage you to subscribe. There's a button under the video, or one on the screen, where you can uh, let YouTube know that you like this channel, then YouTube will just send you notifications every so often. You know, if you like these videos, that's the best way to hear when new ones come out. There are other videos in this series. This is a math in the news series, as I said. I'm producing these videos every week, so if you like what you hear, there are other videos you can watch on the channel. You can see some links on this screen also. That's it for this week. I uh, wish you every success in your maths teaching and I look forward to talking to you next time.